Hello everybody, Lana Lamb here. Welcome to my studio. I am so glad that you dropped in today. I am an acrylic artist, so if you have never painted with me, welcome, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. I appreciate you stopping by. If you want to hit that subscribe button and subscribe while you're here, the notification bell so you know every time I post a video or go live on YouTube, and hit that thumbs up. All of that helps me grow right here on YouTube. But today's painting is going to be a fun one. We've got some layered background. Um, it's going to be a more intermediate style painting, but uh, still a really, really fun one to paint. Let's take a look and see what we're going to be painting. We're going to paint these beautiful birds on this gorgeous background. I just fell in love with this as soon as it was finished. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just painted that. We have two different techniques in the background. Uh, underneath the bokeh effect, we have a little bit of technique, and then we have the bokeh effect technique. And then we've got these beautiful birds, the two cardinals and the chickadee right here on top of all of that. We have had so many cardinals and chickadees in our trees this year. I mean, so many cardinals. It has been crazy. I've been trying to snap pictures left and right, but they are fast little birds. But I think this one will be a really good learning uh, painting. It's more of an intermediate uh, speed of painting and style of painting, but you can learn a lot from it. I use Deco Art Traditions paints on this. I'm on a 9 by 12 canvas panel. So if you are ready, let's grab our paints and supplies and let's get painting this gorgeous painting. All right, I've got a 9 by 12 canvas panel and I did not gesso it this time. So we'll see how that's gonna work out. I have on my brush Salo blue and carbon black kind of mixed together. This is going to be our undercoat in the background. So we'll let it dry and then we're going to come in and apply some colors on top of this uh, using Deco Art Traditions paints. All right, my background's dry. It's more textury than what I like, but I'm going to get the next layer on and then maybe lightly sand it. So I've got just a three-quarter inch uh, filbert brush. You can go with a one inch. I'm going to lay in some color all around this um, canvas here. So I'm going to dampen it. And we're going to do some wet on wet blending here. So on my palette I've got um, course my base coat colors which was black and phthalo blue. I've added some cobalt blue hue. I don't know if I'm going to use it. <clears throat> um, we'll see how it looks. Uh, I've got aquamarine, medium green, titanium white, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and Hansa yellow medium. I don't know how many of those colors I'm going to use but um, I really want to work them around the surface quite a bit. So I'm going to start up here in this corner and I'm going to take some um, uh, raw sienna and a little bit of white, mix those together, and I'm going to put those in here. Kind of lay them in. I'm going to take another brush that's got just water in it and kind of loosely soften those edges. blend that out. Um, I am going to wash out because my next color is green and I'm going to go into some green, maybe a little white with it, um, maybe a little burnt sienna with it. I don't want it to be incredibly bright. This green is kind of bright. So I'm going to lay some of this in here, bring it up to that other color. I'm going to definitely be brightening that. And then I'm going to take my damp brush and soften out the edges out here. Wipe off 
I picked up some paint there. And soften that out, wipe my brush off, and then just very gently kind of blend over that. Now you could get a mop brush and do this as well. I'm just going to hang on to using this brush and just kind of tickle blending it. I want to do that green in another place, maybe down here. Definitely need a little water in that. Okay, I want to soften out around the edges. You don't want any hard edges here. And then again, you can very lightly tickle over that and smooth it out. And I think I'll put green in one more place. Over here, I might put a tint up there, maybe a touch down here. Um, I do want to put a little bit of that burnt sienna in with it. Tone it down a little bit, just a little scooch of some out here. And then soften around the edges and just tickle across it. Alright, I'm going to add a little raw sienna into this one instead of burnt sienna. And we're going to put a little bit brighter green up here. Get some fresh water on my brush and blend out those edges. And just tickle it. Tickle, tickle, tickle. And then a little bit right over here along the edge. Not too much. Ooh. Okay, this background's not going to look like a lot while we're working on it, but um, it will come together. So I'm going to rinse out both of my brushes. That's my water brush. This is my painting brush. I want to add, well, no, that's still too wet up there, so I can't do that. Um, let's go into our burnt sienna. And I'll grab a little raw sienna in there. And we're going to put some of this down here. A little bit more raw sienna. Maybe a little white in there. Okay, I'm going to take my water brush and soften out. Just lightly through that green because I don't want to lift that green. I'm sure it's not dry. Let's blend them here a little bit. Wash that brush out because it's my water brush and I don't really want to have paint in it. Okay. And you can tickle across this, kind of remove some of those brush strokes. Like I said, you can get a mop brush, like a really large mop brush, and soften that paint out a little bit. Okay, you gotta keep your mop brush cleaned off though so you don't transfer paint everywhere. Let's put a little bit of this up here. And water brush. Blend out. And mop brush. Smooth out. Clean mop brush off. Another paper towel that I can clean it off with. Okay, I do want to put a little bit down here. Just right there. Just a little spot. And very gently blend it wet place and remove make sure I get the paint off of that brush okay I'm gonna clean that out a little bit because I want to go into some yellow now yellow and um, raw sienna and we're gonna put a little bit of this in here tap brush Blend it out. We're going to come in with our background color and work all these colors together. Right now we're just laying in some, some other colors that we can use on here. Um, let's see, we'll put a little bit of this, maybe a little bit brighter yellow here. Right through there. Okay. 
very gently blend that out, clean off, clean off, and then clean my brush out. I'm going to have a lot of wet places here. This is my water brush. This is my painting brush. Okay, so our next color, I'm going to go into that aquamarine and I might mix a little bit of what color do I have here? Cobalt blue hue. Just give a little bit of a, a little bit more of that cobalt blue in there. This is going to be a much brighter color in here. Ooh, a lot of water in my brush. Take that out. Very gently. Gently, gently. Okay, I'm going to put some of that over here. I love this color. Blend, blend, blend. Be careful going over some of your other colors in case they're not dry. Oops, very gently. Just tickle that out. Clean that paint off. That's a really staining paint there. Open this up so I can get some water here. It doesn't have paint in it. All right. Uh, we're gonna put some of this over here, down here, through here, and some up here. All right. Let's blend all these. Keeping the, uh, trying to keep the, the water edge outside away from the paint and then I have that one edge that is picking up paint. Put a little bit of green in with that blue. Put some of this back here. Oh, I used my water brush. Clean that out real quick because it's the one I want to blend with. Okay. Okay. All right, now we're going to add in some uh, black and the blue. Um, mostly black I think in here and I think I'm going to get a scumbly brush and do this dry so I'm going to grab some black I can have a little bit of that blue in there that we started out with tap 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 well, I want to make sure this is dry because I don't want to lift anything going through here So we're going to be using mostly black here in our brush. Now I know this is a lot for a background, but um, it's going to look so cool when we get done. Alright, that's probably good enough. And I'm just going to start scumbling this in in between our colors and kind of blending. Pick up more. Tap a little bit. And you can go into your colors. You know, this is going to help blend it all together. You can come back in and add another layer of what you've got here already. It's mostly black, but you can add some of that blue. <laughs> Brush 
hairs out of there. The arm's getting tired. Plus this is going to help tone down a little bit of that just by very gently scumbling over some of your colors. And we've got kind of a patchy kind of background going on there, but it's going to be super cool when we're done. All right, so now we're going to get ready to add in some bokeh effect. I mean, this is already kind of a bokeh effect blurred out our background here, but we're going to make it even grander uh, by stenciling on here. Okay, so I've got my um, stencil here. This is a stencil that I created. It starts at one quarter inch and goes up quarter inch increments all the way up to two inches. I'm going to use the um, I think I'm going to use the one and a half inch circle to start with and then maybe do a few smaller ones, one and a quarter inch. Because of how big my canvas is, I think that would work out the best. So I want a stencil brush, and I'm going to use some glazing medium. I'll put that on my palette here. That's what I'm going to use. Um, move that water off of my palette. So I'll be loading my brush with the glazing medium. It's right here. It's very fluid. It's very fluid. Uh, any brand of glazing medium will do. So I don't want my brush to be really super wet. So after I load it, I'm going to tap a little bit. And I'm going to pick a, a color. Let's start with a green. And I'm using the smallest amount of paint, keeping this light and sheer and then placing my stencil where I would like it to be and we'll stencil in a circle here. This might need a tiny bit of white in it to make it stand out. I picked up some of that blue off of the background so <clears throat> I don't really want it to pick up any of that dark color. All right. More glazing medium. Let's go into a little raw sienna and work that in. And we'll go up here. <clears throat> Put this one up here. These will be pretty transparent, so you can move around your you can move around your canvas with your um, particular color that you want to use. A little bit more white, or add a little white to that. I'm going to tap that here because this will be bright and I don't want it to be incredibly bright. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to do a couple more of the burnt sienna. I think I'm going to go down to a smaller circle here.
the less uh, glazing medium that you use, the more opaque your circle will be. So just be aware of that. <clears throat> I'm going to grab a little bit of white in my brush and maybe a little bit of raw sienna. Let that kind of mix together. I need more glazing medium, so I'm going to grab that and mix it in. And tap, because i got a lot of glazing medium there. I'll let the go up here. I'm going to move this over so my stencil is not laying in my paint. And I'll put one of these up here. A little bit too much there. So I'm going to grab some yellow and blend some yellow in there and tap over here. And I'm going to go with a smaller one. Right there. Maybe down here. <clears throat> so you're just going to jump around your colors here and uh, pick the ones that you want in here. Use some glazing medium and that will keep them transparent so they're not uh, staying on top of your painting. I'll go back into some green here. Work that into my brush, then grab some glazing medium. Tap, tap, tap. I had a little yellow still in my brush. Clean that out, and I'll grab some more yellow, some more glazing medium. I think that's what I was using. I'm not 100% sure. I just want to do a couple of brighter ones. Brighter yellow, I guess I should say. in here. And I'm going to go on to my green. Still got a little bit of that yellow in my brush and that's okay. I can't really see that one. Let me add a little bit more green in there. that one a little bit. I'm going to have to add a tiny little white in there. More green. Tap, tap, tap. Because I want some glazing medium in there now. down to an even smaller size here for a little bit. So I'm working within these three sizes, one and a half, one quarter, and one inch. And again, you can work on any sizes that you want to do, so I really like this stencil because of the various sizes that it has on it. I can move around when I'm doing my bouquet effect and create all different sizes here. I want more raw sienna. Maybe add some burnt, I mean I want more burnt sienna. And add a little raw sienna with it. Grab my glazing medium. Tap, tap, tap. 
tab. Let's see if I can make a darker one here. small one here. Yeah, and have some going off the edges. They don't all have to be, um, you know, right where you, those are still not really showing up down there. So I might have to go a little stronger paint or something here. Um, let's see. I think I'll do one of these up here. Let's go with a small one. See if that will show up. I'm going to clean my brush just by rubbing it on a dry paper towel and removing some of that paint. Okay, I want to start doing some blue ones. So I'm going to take some glazing medium and that um, aqua. Marine, and I'm going to add some of that. What did I add? Cobalt blue hue to it. I'm going to remove a little tiny bit of white in there. Remove. Go ahead, grab some glazing medium. Tap, tap, tap. And let's see about adding some of these blue ones in here. varying values so I'll probably add a little more white to the uh, paint and do some that are a little bit brighter because <clears throat> as we come a little more forward we do want to have some brighter brighter Now I'll add a little bit more white to that mix. Tap, tap, tap. And we'll put some of these a little bit brighter ones in here. All of our colors we can come back and add a little more white to them and get some brighter brighter ones in here a little bit more white now, to eliminate brush strokes within your bokeh effect when you're doing this removing a lot of the paint out of your brush is going to help that so and if n some of yours are not as bright as you would like when you're done you can go in and um, just add a glaze over them of the color that you want to bring forward a little bit more And if you've got one more than one um, brush that you can work with, that's always helpful as well. I'm going to put a little bit of just aquamarine in here. And this will be a little bit brighter color on our blue here. It's got a little less glazing medium in it, so it's a little bit brighter. I'm going to grab some glazing medium and mix in with it now. Tap, tap, tap. Ooh, got a lot of glazing medium there. So let's go up here and do one. I 
just absolutely love this effect in, in any background. I think it is so gorgeous. So let me put one of these brighter ones down here. I need to add some brighter orangey colored ones down there. So let's see where else I want to go. And then I'll probably do some that are mostly just glazing medium. I'm just letting my eye flow around the canvas and see where I want to go. I think I want to go back to some green. So I'm going to remove that and pick up my green. Some glazing medium. Tap, tap, tap. I'm going to put some small green ones. Fun. Okay. Let my eye flow around this a little bit. I think I want to put a green one up here. A little bit brighter green than that one. So a little bit more of the green paint. That one won't be transparent very much because it has mostly um, paint, not very much glazing medium. I'm going to clean my brush out and go down to a um, orangey color now. So if I can get an orange that's not going to mix too much with that green. I don't want to add any white to it, but I think I might have to. I'm trying it without adding white first. I laid it in paint. Look, I've transferred that paint everywhere. So I'm going to have to cover up all those spots now because that's not going to work out for me having those spots on there. Well, goodness gracious sakes alive. Okay, let me get a damp brush here. I got that one off. where that's coming from. That one had some bleed under, so that's where that came from. Alright, down here I need, definitely need a brighter, brighter one. Okay. I think that's all I'm going to do of those colors. I'm going to now work mostly with white. So I think I will get a different brush. Okay, this is a smaller brush, but I think it can still get the job done. So I'm going to grab glazing medium and some white. And we're going to go in here with some white ones. I'll probably come back with a blue one and cover that up. But right now I want to put some white ones in here. And that was still wet so I 
mixed my paint. I think I'll dry over this real quickly. The glazing medium is going to keep it from drying as quickly, but I think I've just been picking up from my paper towel where I've been wiping off. Alright, let's go up here. Grab another white. white and a little bit of glazing medium. Maybe a little bit more glazing medium, a little bit less paint. I want to get some that are a little transparent and then I can always come back and wash over them. Wipe a little bit of that off of my brush. I want more up here. Might even go with some smaller ones. stencil. Let's grab some glazing medium so I can thin this one a little bit. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of that blue in my brush so I can put one over this one. My brush with mostly just glazing medium. Whatever paint is left in there is what, what we get. Okay, I'm going to put some white ones down here. Sienna. Tap, tap, tap. I'm gonna dry that. I want some more raw sienna ones in here. Mostly raw sienna. Let's go up here.
I do still have a little bit of glazing medium in my brush here, so. Come in with a little burnt sienna in that. It's the color that I don't think is coming out as dark as I would like it to. Okay, I, I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I do, I really still want to put some in here that are just mostly glazing medium. Let's see if I can clean this out and get some glazing medium in it. Clean it out with hand sanitizer because I can get that out quickly without keeping my brush real wet. Okay. I need some fresh glazing medium because I got paint all in that. So put just a little bit out here. Still looks like it has some paint in it. Just a few that are a little more transparent. And once these dry, these will really fade. You should be able to see through them and see the colors that are behind them. Mostly glazing medium here. I don't have hardly any paint of any kind in my brush. There might be a tiny bit of white still in there. Pretty close to the end here. Like I said, you can keep 
going on and on and on with these. There's really no wrong way to do the circles in your background with the bouquet effect. I'm going to grab a little bit of white. I want that one to be a little brighter. Pretty done with this. We've got a beautiful effect going on. So um, take your time, and you see how all that stuff that we put in the background now is not as visible. So it it pushed back, and then now these are on top, and they will push back once we are um, done with them. So. We're going to let this dry, and then we'll get our line drawing on. All right, I've got my line drawing on here. Um, I've decided to put cardinals. I was going to put three cardinals, but I think I'm going to do two cardinals and a chickadee. So first we're going to paint in our branch. So I'm going to take some warm white and a little bit of black and make a gray color. And we'll just start painting in our branches with this gray. And then we can come in and add to this. I'm not sure what kind of limbs I will make them. So I think this one's going to be a chickadee, so I'm just going to cover up that part of the top of the bird. Okay, so we'll just go along here and paint in our gray Mix a little more here. Your values do not have to be exactly the same. Like a little knot on the tree there. I might want to bring a limb off right there. I don't know. I just kind of drew in the basic um, limb shape for now. And we'll come in and add some some more details. Got a limb coming down here. And then a smaller one coming off of this one. We'll be making some other limbs off of that as well. So, and then we've got this one. I'll put a little bit of water in my paint here. Starts getting draggy where it doesn't want to flow, then you definitely need to add some moisture into your paint. Just keep mixing and keep painting. When we get these, after we get these bigger areas painted in, then we'll come in with some little branches here and there. so my paint can flow much better. A little bit more white in there. And 
And you can certainly, you know, you could put these birds like lined up on a fence down here. That would be really cute and I did think about doing that first. I think that's our initial mained branches here. So now you can come in with a smaller brush and add some other branches coming off of it because like down here that looks you know kind of weird like that right now. So let's see what kind of brush we can use here. I'm going to grab a round brush mix some up. I want to thin it a little bit with water. This is warm white and my carbon black. I don't have my white white out yet so I'm probably not going to make tons of um, stuff coming off of this just because I don't want the um, limbs to become the biggest focal point. But I think I'll bring one off of this one just a little bit. Almost like fingers coming off of that one. These can cross over each other, so don't be afraid to cross them over the next one. Make this one just a little bit fatter right through there. Alright, let's put one coming off here. Just bring it across that way. And like I said, there's no right or wrong to whatever you want to do with your limbs. Just bring this one out just a little bit. Now I do have this one coming across the bird right here, but I think I might just eliminate that branch. And then we'll bring this one out and some limbs that are crisscrossing here. And I might put one here. your tree tree limbs you do what you want might take that one completely off of the canvas and make this one a little bit fatter I think That makes me a little happier there. And then just come off with a little bit of a fatter one here. Damp brush. 
my painting underneath is very dry so I don't have to worry about lifting anything and then maybe just a couple down here okay and again you can you know, keep going adding more you know like one coming off back here might be kind of cool I am going to erase this one that I put on here I'm not going to use that one now but I might put a few coming off of the canvas over here And anything you don't like that you put on here, certainly just take a damp brush and remove it. And maybe one coming up this way. Okay, this one might need a little piece of one, you know, just to maybe a, you know, fat little branch that's coming off right here. Okay. I think that's going to do us good for our um, limbs. While we have this gray color, we're going to block in some color on our chickadee. So I'm going to take that gray. And get our chickadee shape here. and everything we'll just paint it all in then we'll come in and establish our dark and light areas in here okay So that's kind of just a roughing in of that bird. Let's grab some red. We're going to go with Napthal Red. And I'm going to add some of that gray mix in it. So I'm going to make some of the gray mix here. And then add my red into that. Give us a muted red color. This is Napthal Red in here. And we've got two cardinals. We're not going to worry about their um, their feet. We're just getting the basic shapes here. We can come back in and add detail lines as we need it. That's going to be black in there, so I'm just going to eliminate that color. I mean, not put the, the reddish color in there. And I'm going to try and make my two cardinals to be just slightly different in color. We shall see how that works out. And then the 
this is the little tip of the wing here. And then his wing. Oh, I'm going over that circle, not around it. His tail feathers come down here. And the other one's tail feathers kind of come up towards that guy, so they kind of crisscross their, their tail feathers crisscross a little bit. Uh, I'm going to get some burnt sienna out. I'm not sure that's the color <coughs> that I want to try and use here. Get a little bit different color of red. I'm going to add more of the naphthol red and some burnt sienna in my mix here. I'll make this one a little darker. A little more on the orangey side. Again, I'm going to go around that area that's going to be black. They're going to be underneath the wing there. Okay, we've got our first um, like base coats on everything. <clears throat> so we're going to work on our branches and get them completed and then start working on our birds. Okay, I did come in and make some of my branches a little bit longer. So now we're going to start putting some detail on here. So first I want to shade on the lower edges of them with some black. figure out what branch is going over another one. Create that little bit of a shadow there. And we can go around our bird here. The beak comes out here. starting to create form here right now. Just with black you can mix a little bit of warm white in there if you want to keep it more of a dark gray. This is where you can decide if the limb is behind or on top simply by where you put the shadow or the shaded side. I'm just bringing a little bit of this down onto those lower limbs, those scraggly ones that are coming off. here. Now you can do a wet on wet blending with this too if you would like. So I'm doing the traditional just floating here. Of 
course you know where one goes behind another. You'll want some shading there. This one goes across. It could go behind. Just depends on the look you're going for. Use whatever brush works best for you. There were some cardinals in our tree yesterday and they were a lot of them. And they were, that tree just has limbs going everywhere so it's kind of what I mimicked this, this particular limbs off of. I'm just using a 10, 10 chisel blender, but you could certainly go to, to an angle brush, a smaller brush than what I'm using. I'm tilting up on the toe when I'm getting into some tight areas. And just kind of going along the lines of those thinner branches. turn this into a birch tree, whatever kind of tree you want. Now this one here, I want this one to be behind, so I'm going to work on uh, that big, big branch there. Spread this small palette with some water. And grab a little bit of black, maybe mix a little warm white in with it, give it just a dark gray color. A little bit more black in there. We're going to go along this one, and I want it to be in front of that. So I'm going to go right over that area. When you meet another lamb, you have to decide, is it on top or is it on bottom? Because that determines which side you put your dark color on. I did come in and make some of my limbs a little bit longer. I'm doing these smaller limbs. I'm doing them after I've done the main part so there won't be very much moisture left in my brush so I can come down them a little bit easier.
that right there and let that one come off of that edge a little bit easier. This one up here needs to be darker. We are going to come in and darken, so not to worry. shadow, start my shadow here under the bird, and we can do that here as well, a little bit of shadow under our bird, this one won't really have much, a little bit, okay, that makes the, the beginning shading really makes those branches look a lot better. Um, like we're not, they're not so bright, they're not like taking over the painting, which can be how it seems when you're starting this out. It can seem like, oh my gosh, those, those branches are massive. Okay, we're going to start working on the limbs a little more. So I've got a small flat brush, a size 6. And I want to start adding some almost like birch tree type stuff on here. So just some lines, maybe some fatter ones here and there. And just create our light is going to be on this edge. And there'll be some little knots in this in this kind of tree, so you could put some of those in here. We're just going to kind of dry brush from each side. It's, it's a pretty easy process, so um, don't really um, stress too much about it. So sometimes I'm using the brush flat and dragging a little bit more, and sometimes I'm up on the chisel edge. I need a tiny bit of moisture in my brush here. And every now and then I'll put one of those knot things in here. This is just using the black. Now, another way that you could do this is paint it all in with black and then add your lighter grays and your whites on top. So don't feel like you're limited to exactly how I'm doing it. There are many ways to paint in birch limbs. And then these finer limbs you know, won't have as much detail, so they'll just get a little bit of kind of dabbing of stuff on here. And then the same when you get down here to the end, we can kind of be more dabby and irregular with our stuff. And we're starting to create a beautiful birch limb right there. They'll all be done the same way, so a big kind of dark area right there where it kind of bumps out. That's maybe a knot where a limb had broke off once. Some little dabby stuff going on here. Not a lot. But the skinnier limbs don't have tons of detail on them, so... Now I'm just kind of 
not giving tons of detail out here, just more dabbing stuff because it's getting to be more of a narrow limb, so just dibby dab. Okay, there's one I forgot to shade. Along this one, just some dabs here and there. Okay. I need to shade that one real quick. It's going across, so... Alright, I can put some little dibby dabs on that. Let's do this one. not a great big limb, more towards the end of it, so just some little dabs here and there. Okay, you can go back in here where you have painted some of your more dry brush stripes and add some little dib dab, I call them dibby dabs, tap tap taps in there and create a little bit more character within the tree branch so it's not quite so smoothed out. Uh, birch trees have lots of texture on them. So just add those little dabs here and there. And we're going to do this with, with the other branches exactly the same way. I'm going to go off camera and do this last main branch so it's not taking a lot of camera time, uh, but it's going to be done exactly how I just did that one. Okay, next we're going to take some burnt sienna and create a little wash of this color by adding some water into it. And... Um, A little bit more water, thin it down a little bit more. The color, I'm thinning the color more. And then we're going to take this and put it on maybe a little bit more pigment in there. Put it on our limb here and there. I'm going to keep it more towards the middle maybe. I'm not covering the entire branches. It's just going in some places. And I'm adding a little bit more paint to it because it was a little bit too thin. It was going to fade away pretty much to nothing very quickly. I do want it to fade in there. I just don't want it to fade quite that much. Just here and there. We're not covering up the entire limb, so don't get carried away. We can dry this and come back and add some more because once we start shading on here, we might lose some of that um, raw sienna on there. So I think I will dry mine quickly. Well, mine's drying pretty fast. Let's see if we can get a little bit more pigment in here. That was still wet. Most of these places are already dry, so just dabbing a little bit more of that pigment in there. Okay. So that looks pretty good. For that burnt sienna and we can come back and add more of that if we want to okay so I want that to get dry and then we're going to do our shading with our black again all right we're going to shade I'm going to load my brush with some black paint just on the corner I'm using an angle brush now half inch angle but you can certainly get in just a little bit here and so we're going to darken down here. 
I don't want to darken so much that I can't see my lines. So keep it a little sheer. Let's see. I think does that one come over? I think it may have come over. We'll just make it over. And then a little shading there. That's going to be mostly shaded in that section. So you're just going back over all the areas that you did before. This is kind of a washy float. It is not solid black. See, I've got lots of moisture there. So that's keeping the paint more sheer. You could do this with a dark gray. You can mix some of that sienna in with it. But you definitely want to make sure you're defining your areas more with this one. When you're getting into your narrow areas, stand up on the toe of the brush. That way you won't quite fill it in completely. Just a touch more black on my brush here. This water. Darken next to this limb. right next to this bird, which I could go with a much smaller brush here. Let's see what I can get done with this big one though. Grab some moisture on my brush so I can blend. Just gonna keep going here. Go down to this one. Make it a little bit wider of a float than it was the last time so it can come up on the limb, especially those fatter areas right there. Okay, a little bit underneath this bird. A little bit on the tail there. A little bit through here. I'm up on the tip tip toe here. Okay, a little bit more paint on my brush so I can go next to this branch here. a little bit more of a shadowed division there. You could definitely go down to a 3 8 inch angle brush, a half inch. You do not have to use one this big. Which I might go down to a 3 8 here in a minute. Because this one's feeling a little bit big. come off the paint doesn't want to come off my brush I know I need a little bit of moisture in that paint Good. 
I'm going to go ahead and try and continue with this brush here, although I really feel like I need to go to a smaller one. We've got some shadow there. here. Let's paint more water. That's a lot of paint. I'm going to tip here. through here and see what might needs to be a little bit more or where you missed. This is where you really define your, your limb separations. So a little bit underneath here, under that bird. A little bit here. So we basically just um, darkened up all of our shadow areas. So let me make sure I get that covered up. I just don't want to lose all of that um, texture that I put on the bark. So once you put your second uh, shading on here, if you feel like you have lost some of your black on here. Come back in and add a little bit of it here and there. You don't have to do it all, so don't feel like you have to do it all. And just add some of those, maybe a few lines and some dibby dabs in here. Maybe more on top so that um, we see some of that. A little bit darker. And this time I'm just using a round brush, so I'll just be putting in a little bit of paint so it's not I don't think I shaded down this one. So that brought a few back on top. So that's good. So that was our second shading after we did the, um, the uh, black. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm talking about here. I'm going to, I think, use my round brush and just kind of scumble in some more of this. Washy burnt sienna. Okay, that looks pretty good. 
still got our highlight on there to do on our limbs and then we'll be ready to move on to our birds. Okay, I'm going to start my highlight. I've got a 3 8 inch angle now. I've got my warm white with just a teeny tiny little bit of black in it right here to make a light lighter gray than what we based in our and I'm just going to tap it in there and maybe pull it a little bit onto the branches I don't really want a, a solid line across the top of this so we'll have, I'm just going to take the chisel edge and do a little bit here and there Okay, we're not going to do every place. Just again, pick some places that you want to bump out. And I will pull just a few into the branch itself. And I've come back in and put some of my black ones back in right through there. So this is where you want to adjust as you're painting. And maybe some of those dibby dabs. So I kind of lost some of that in there, especially on that one. And it will definitely be brighter in there. Now you can use the round brush to do this as well. So let me show you how to do it with just a small round brush. You don't have to do it with a, um, a larger brush if you don't want to. So I'm mixing a light gray with warm white and a little bit of black. Lighter than what we um, did our... It's almost like a dry brushing. It's a little scumbling here and there, but not. Um, I'll come back and add some brighter white on here, probably too. But we're just starting now with just this kind of gray mixture. You can also do the dibby dab thing with the white here. It's just kind of a hit and miss kind of thing. Step on the tippy toe of this little round brush. Hopefully keeping you on camera. these smaller branches I'm just dabbing it on there um, on the um, fatter parts of the branch I'm trying to give it a little bit more of a, a stroke down kind of thing where the edge of that branch is. Looks like it goes up there, so we'll just take it up that way. Finish this 
one out. Put a little bit down here. It's got um, a little bit of a shadow underneath that bird there. Remember, you're not going solidly across any branch. You're just laying in some randomness. I don't know how else to put that, but it needs to be random. It needs to be dabby and patty and, you know, maybe a little dotted line here and there. This is how you can start making your highlights. Okay, and then let your eye kind of wander around it and see where you maybe missed putting a little bit of this color. That's our first little highlight on there. A wide angle out so you can see the whole thing. So that's our first little kind of dab of some highlights in there. And you can go back and forth with your black and even your burnt sienna uh, creating them how you want them to look, you know, if you want them darker on the bottom edge, like this one I feel like could be a little bit darker. So I could just take my black with this round brush and kind of come along and pull up like I did with the, with the lighter color and darken a little bit of that. That's looking pretty good. So we're just going to add a, a small little extra highlight on here of just some straight white. And then I think we'll leave the branches until we get the birds done and then see where we need to add some extra shading in there to separate because once you get everything painted in, you can kind of see where everything's coming together. So let's add some white out onto our palette. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the white, only less area than we did with that light gray. So I'm just going to use my round brush still and come in here and put a few brighter areas. Not everywhere, we're just adding a little bit more. This uh, white can be a little overpowering here for this. so. We do want to keep it a little bit more less than what we did the first time, I guess. pretty fat there. You can also take this white or that light gray and create a few more um, wiry thin little limbs coming out here and there. This is just kissing a little bit of a highlight, a little bit more of a highlight on here. Again, we're not covering up everything that we did before, so I'm 
Just adding that little bit of highlight. We do need to add some highlight on this one because we need to see that it kind of goes behind there. Just kind of bounce around it. You get it too dark, touch it back with your finger. That's pretty bright. Stay within my my branch. Okay, so I need to finish up this one. If you get too much of your white on here, you can kind of wash over it with a little bit of a medium gray. Take it down a little bit. Not too dark of a gray because then you'll just be going all the way back to your base color. But you can certainly wash it back a little bit. Let's take our eye around it, see how it looks. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna leave the limb right there till after we get our birds painted in, and then we'll see what we want to adjust. I might want to put a little bit more raw sienna in there because I'm kind of feeling like it needs a little bit more of that raw sienna or a little bit more of the black brought in <clears throat> to the branch. Um, I really do feel like that one of those colors kind of took down our black a little bit, so. I'm just gonna quickly add a little bit of black back in here. I don't have much black on my palette left, so I don't got a whole lot on my brush. So I'm mostly going to just do some little dabbing stuff in here. Bring some of that black back on top. And then when you're happy with it, we'll just leave it. Um, it's best to leave it until after you get your bird birds done. That way, if there's any areas that need any assistance, uh, you can do it then. Let's see if I've got enough black left here on my palette to go ahead and put the black, begin the black on the um, cardinal. This is, I don't have much black on my brush at all because it's pretty empty. But we'll get a good um, start to our black there. And the chickadee has some black on its crown. 
So we can just go ahead and tap some black in here. I'm going to have to get my chickadee pictures out so I can make sure I'm doing this bird right. And then it's got some that comes under here. Goes back this way. But I think that I think that's how our chickadee starts out. So we can just lay in a little bit of roughness. That's just something to get us for placement. And I think we're ready to start on our birds. Okay, I'm ready to move on to the birds now. I already am not liking my branches. Uh, I think I lost too much of the gray in there. So I'll probably come back in and add a little bit of gray back in there later. But for now, I'm going to leave them. We're going to move on to the chickadee. Now, <clears throat> the chickadee here has um, an area that goes from here all the way to the beak. The beak is not very big. It's just a small beak. And then there's all this black under here. This area is black. And then this area right through here is all white. And then we'll have a wing that will come across right through here. And it will have all these lines. And then this is the, the tail feathers here. And I am going to add um, part of a leg that we can see here. Maybe some claws there. We can't really see this other foot. So that's why I'm torn about even adding a foot um, on there. I'll have to think about that because I have it setting so low. We could just have, you know, the feet like right there, you know, where it's sitting there. So we're going to need black and white for now, that's all we're going to add. We'll add a little bit of raw sienna later, but let's just start out with some white and black. <clears throat> I think I will actually use warm white so I can keep it a little muted. And then when I come back and add white white on top, then we'll be able to see that a little bit more. So I'm going to start with warm white and a little bit of black. Or carbon black is the color. Let me find it. And we're just going to mix and use a round brush. I've got my palette over here, spritzing it with water on the side like I always do so I can have some clean water right here on the edge of my palette. You see all those water drops? So when I need clean water on my brush, I'm just going to go grab some water right there. And I can control how much water I get and not um, worry so much about getting too much out of the water basin. So I'm going to start with just a um, round brush and we'll lay in our black areas first. We'll be going back and forth between our black and our white and our gray. This is all gray back here. So this is all black through here. And we'll add the eye in later. And their heads are pretty round. So we'll just put some black in. It's like they, they almost have a hat on right there. And then it's all black under here. So we're just going to go ahead and paint it in black and we'll come in with some uh, other little strokes later to create a little bit more of the texture. It can come back this way a little bit. And this goes all the way to the beak here. So I want to make sure that it's there. We just have this white little bit right there and then through there. I'm going to go ahead and take some of this black and just kind of streak it down the tail feather. We'll be adding more layers on here. And then I'm also going to, now this is where you could get a detail liner, um, add a little bit through here. Again, we're going to be coming across with lighter colors and everything. So I'm going to thin my black with a little bit of water. Get a little bit more of an inky consistency and 
we're just going to pull a few black strokes across through there. Okay, I mean, we might as well do everything we need to do with the black while we got it on a brush. Now I want to pick up a little bit of the uh, warm white and make a gray. We're going to paint the beacon with this gray color. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit more of the warm white in there. And we're going to put some of this gray through here. I'm just using this round brush. Use whatever kind of brush that you like to do to make little strokes with. Okay, I just want to get some, some gray in here. I know we've already got gray laid in there, um, but I want to put a little bit more in there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of this gray through here. I'm going to add a little bit more warm white to that mix and a little bit of water so I can thin it down. I've got a lot of black in my brush, so let me just rinse my brush out. That might be easier. And then mix a little bit of warm white in there with that tiny little bit of black so we can have a, just a very subtle gray in here. And we'll put this on the chest. This is a very, very light gray, much lighter than that, and we'll go all the way back here. Okay, let's put some of this in here. We're eventually going to have this be white, but we can lay some of this in here and get this going. And create the little light areas. So. We've got our black in our black areas. Add a little bit of warm white and you get like a medium gray and paint the beak in a few strokes through here. And then um, add a lot of warm white to your gray mix and get a very, very pale gray here. And just a rough stroking in through there on the chest and right in through here. Those areas will definitely be lighter as we go, actually some of that uh, lighter gray mix, let's add some on the wings here. We're going to need some of this in here. And coming across. I don't really want to cover up all of my, my black, actually. I think I'm going to take it this way because I don't know. I don't like it that way. I like it the more rounded way, the more curved way. It just looks more like a... Okay, so just lay a little bit in there on top of that black. Okay, we're definitely going to come back with either a smaller detail round or with a 10-0 um, a, a liner or something to get some fine lines in there. Uh, but for now, we just want that... Um, little bit of stuff going on here. Okay. So the wing is going to come around. Through there. Okay. That's got us our beginning of our chickadee there. I'm going to take that um, that darker gray mix there. Actually, I'm going to add some black to it and make it a little darker. Almost black, not quite. Because I want to be able to highlight. And I'm going to put... to go a little bit lighter so we can see it. Even lighter than that. Goodness. And make some feet. I really want them to be dark to begin with, so... There we go. Let's just make them black. So we'll just put a couple of... Those are pretty fat. You probably don't want them to be quite that fat. That's some pretty fat little... Pretty fat little claws there. 
This is a little bird. Let's not let's not make them too incredibly big. Okay. Um, so we're going to start adding some uh, colors in here. I'm going to start with my uh, white that I want to add in here, which is I'm going to start with warm white, and then we'll eventually get up to we'll eventually get up to um, white, white, snow white, titanium white. So add a little bit of paint. And I'm just going to very gently tap some of this in here. Light touch. Now you have to have a little bit of water in your brush. Not a ton of water, but a little bit to thin the paint so it, it flows off of your brush. You don't want it to be um, so thin that it fades away. So we're just going to tap some of that in there. Right, we can bring some of this up into the black because we're going to bring some of the black down into it. Give it some definite little texture stuff there. Okay, I'm going to take some of this white. I definitely want to thin it a little bit. Now this is where you could go to a detail liner and we're going to put some fine little strokes down here. Okay, let's put a little bit of that on the tail feathers along this edge here. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of black to that. And we'll make oh, a lot of black, that was a lot. I want to make that uh, more medium gray color. Start adding some of that in here. Oh, too much water in my brush, so let's clean that out and reload here. And add a little bit more warm white, I think. I think I really want it to maybe be just a touch darker, a little bit darker gray. I want to be able to see it. I'm not seeing it, so a little bit of black in there. And some water. There we go. Just some little feathery, easy strokes. Nothing great big. black in there so we can kind of see this stuff going on. And we'll put a few of these through here. Don't cover up all your white. A little bit of this back here on the tail. Don't cover up all your other stuff. I want some of this through here because the wing in this area actually needs to come down a little bit lower. Better. And we can bring a little bit of this up into that lighter color. We'll have all this blending out pretty soon. Bring a little bit up into the black. You can turn it around and pull it towards you or do it like I'm doing it here. Okay. Um, I might put just a few in through here. I'm going to be covering most of this with white, but we'll put a little bit in there. Okay, um, I'm going to rinse my brush off because I don't want any light color in it now because I want to go into black first and then I'm going to go back into that lighter gray. So with this black, again this is where you might want to get a detail brush. and I'll be going back and forth right through these areas where all of the different colors meet until I get it a nice... Um, way that appeals to me. 
right now I'm just using a little bit of black and working some of that in at the edges of everything and I'm going to a little bit more back here right here at the back of the, the wing and then some lines there should be all these dark and, and light lines gray black white it's all the colors that are in the, the chickadee Make sure the tail feather's got some black in it. A little bit through here. Now this is where you could definitely go to your, your detail liner and uh, create this stuff right through here. Okay, I'm going to wipe off and go into that lighter gray just let it mix into my brush there and we'll start adding some of this in here okay i think i'm gonna wash actually i'm gonna put up i'm gonna wash my brush because i want to grab some lighter color here Okay, we're going to start adding some white in here. Um, so before I do that, I think I'm going to tap a little bit of this lighter gray mixture up here on the top of the, the head a little bit. Just start creating a little bit of a highlight there. We'll come in and do the beak after we get all this stuff done. Maybe just a little bit here. And then when we come back with our black, we will definitely be doing that. Now, with the eye, let's see if I can zoom you in and keep you on camera here. The eye is just a circle in here that you're going to outline with your light gray and then put a little highlight in the center of it. So if you get it too wide, it's easy to fix just by coming back with your black. So you'll want to go to a detail liner to do this. I've got a small round here. Definitely need more water. Want it to come off the brush easily. So see, I made that really, really big. So I'm going to grab another brush here and some black because I don't want it to be that big. And we're going to make it smaller. very very thin very thin um, you can go to a let me go to my detail liner here Need a little moisture on there so big it's just the tiniest of the tiniest of eyes <laughs> it's a little bird anyway so it's just got a tiny tiny little eye in there you just don't want to see a whole lot of it. Just a, a faint little outline of it. And then I'm going to take some of that light gray and just dab a little highlight right there in the eye. Okay. All right. I want to start with my white now. And I'm going to start stroking some white in through here. Just some little strokey strokes. I'll come back with some black and some of that gray. Bring a little bit of it up into the 
the head, but we mostly want it to be not very big through there. So right there where I've made it pretty wide, we'll fix that with some black, okay? All right, I'm using a one round here, but I'll probably go down to a detail liner here in a minute. I'm going to put some of this along the chest area. Down through here. A little bit on the tail. Brighten the tail. I'm going to put some white through here. Again, this is a, a, a place where you can come back with your, your black and restroke the black in there and do all that stuff. Okay, that's mostly white in through there now. I'm going to mix a little bit of black with it. This will get us a little bit different gray than the warm white will give us. Got too much black in my brush, so let me rinse out. Mix that black and gray together. I mean the black and white to make it gray. I'm going to mix like a medium type gray, maybe. Maybe a little bit lighter. I want this to stand on top a little bit more. grab a little bit more white and make some a little bit lighter and put just a little bit in here this is where you'll just go back and forth with this bird this is a very very easy bird to paint super super easy because it's got such few colors and it really just takes a few stroking techniques to get it in here and go back into my white. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let me give it just a few more white strokes down on the wing. I'm going to come in with a few black ones. And make sure that's good and bright right through there. Okay. And we'll wipe off and grab our black. And I think I might grab my smaller liner brush now. Because, oh, a lot of pink there. I want to start adding more shape here. And your black paint down so it flows off of your brush. I'm going to break that up a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite so bold up there and down here as well. So when you're coming down here into the chest and even up here you can give your brush a little curve this way or a little curve that way just a little flick at the end before you lift it up and uh, that will help keep all those fun little strokes make it look like it's more feathery and blending out a little more and then I want to put some black back down in here I'm going to try and go underneath and around my light lines so I don't lose those. Okay, I'm going to go back 
to my white. This actually needs to come back a little bit like this. And And I really just go back and forth, just using such small amounts of paint, just lightly creating some stuff here. I definitely need to go with a, a light gray in here. And kind of blend this out. here on the chest. Okay, I think we're, we're pretty good here. We're going to add a little bit more white on the chest and then we're going to add some burnt sand in here and finish off the beak. So a little bit more white on the chest out here. We don't have to keep it confined into that line that I drew there. You can come out past that line a little bit. Give it a little bit more fluffiness. Especially down here. It's really fluffy down here on the bird. All the way. Okay. That chickadee is looking pretty good. I'm going to take this uh, detail brush that I have in my hand and see if I can highlight on the feet just a little bit. So we can kind of tell they're there. Alright, I want to work on the beak and then we will add some raw sand on here and do a little bit of shading. Okay, I'm going to do the beak. First thing I want to do, I've still got my little liner brush here, is to uh, create the top and bottom of the beak. And actually the bottom of this beak should be more flat. So I'm going to flatten that out. It should be flat like that. Um, it's just a little, it's just a small little beak here. to separate that tiny little beak. I want a really dark gray and the under part of the beak. Almost black so I need a little bit more. I don't want it to blend in with the feathers there but it kind of will. And then a little bit right through here at the top. Okay, I'm going to wash off because I don't want all that black in there and go to a light gray. I don't really want it outlined so I'm back with my black and fix that. It's such a small beak, I would not give it tons and tons of detail. You just kind of need to see that it's got a it's got a separation for the top and bottom beak and a little highlight on it and then a little darkness down here. So again, I wouldn't spend a ton of time on this. That one's kind of disappearing into the bird itself. Their, their beaks are really a, um, they're, 
a dark gray. This one needs to be a little bit longer, I think. So I'm going to just make it a little bit longer. That way I can put a little bit more dark stuff on there. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of white on here so we can see it. Sort of see it. It's kind of hard with that. Um, it's kind of hard with the tree being the color, the branch being the color that it is. So maybe a little bit more lightness on this beak. So we can see it. It's really such a small beak that it can become tedious to try and get it to appear. So I'm just going to leave it there because if I keep working at it, it's just going to be um, like incredibly difficult to control it. All right, let's get some raw sienna. a little bit of this on our bird. Very thin washy color of it. A little bit more water. And it's going to go through here. We don't need it to be super dark. It's just a light coloring there. All right, let's shade on the bird just a little bit. So I'll give it a little bit of form. We're going to use the black. Really make it sheer on your brush so that we're putting a light layer on there. Nothing real dark and heavy. And we're going to shade under here. I'm using a 3 8 inch flat. You might want to go to a smaller brush. A little bit less water. So this is where it's going to be shaded. Right there. And we're going to do a little bit along this back wing back here. And then underneath the wing on the tail feather. I do want to put a little bit darker stuff down here. And those are really only the only places you need to shade on the bird is just at the back edge of this wing to bring everything together and underneath it to separate it from the tail feather right here and then underneath this wing just a little bit okay so that really takes care of the bird of the chickadee he really is truly one of the easiest birds to paint um, so we're going to get ready to move on to the cardinals I started lightening up my branch here, so I just took a uh, medium to light gray mix here. I mixed a tiny little bit of black, warm white, and white, and just made a uh, light to medium gray. And I just have my angle brush, and I'm just kind of dry brushing this on here, trying not to go into the shaded part, but I'm going down through the center. I just really want to lighten this branch up. I feel like it's lost its way. Kind of maybe close to the top edge and through the center. I don't know if it was the burnt sienna when I put it on there that kind of made it lose its appeal to me or what but wide angle out we can see it a little bit better 
that looks so much better so I think in my uh, steps I'm gonna leave it as it is and then when you're done with all those steps we'll just dry brush through the center with a medium gray and uh, that way we can just kind of tone everything down and um, make it not so bright or so dark. I guess it was just too dark. It was just blending into the background too much and I couldn't see my chickadee. I mean my chickadee was just disappearing off of the canvas because I couldn't see it because of so much going on with the branch. So I want less going on with the branch. So um, yeah, just go through and add a little bit of this and I've got and it's thinned down. It's not thick paint. It's thinned down so I, I was able to go a long long ways. Actually I filled it up once and did the whole whole thing. Okay, so I like that much better. Um, I'm happy with that. I can see my chickadee now. So I am definitely going to put that instruction in my uh, packet so that you know that it didn't stay that rust color and that all that black through it. We can just see a little bit of the black now. It's still shaded on the bottom. Okay, so that dry brushing really helped give it a little bit, a little bit more roundness, kept it from being flat. All right, we're going to paint in our cardinals now. So I've got on my palette Naphthol Red Light, Naphthol Red, Vermilion, and Black. And I'll also put out some white. <coughs> some white or some warm white, either one will be just fine. I'll just throw both out here, just in case. Okay, all right, so we're going to start painting on our birds. Now, I'm going to paint the beak in first. I'm going to paint it in with vermilion. Kind of an orangey red beak. So we'll paint them in. What's this color? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I want the... Um, the bird to have a little bit of this gray, dark gray, almost black color um, kind of in its wings. <clears throat> so I'm going to take some of my black and some white and mix a dark gray color. And I'm going to stroke some of this color into <clears throat> our bird. This is um, under painting part. <coughs> Excuse me, goodness gracious. So we're just going to stroke a few of this in here uh, through the, the wing area and a little bit at the back of the head. And we'll put just a few up here on this pointy hair part of the head. So this is a, a dark gray. This is underpainting here, so we don't have to really stress about this at all. We're just adding some color in here. Put some on the tail feathers. Okay. I'm gonna go in to just black. <clears throat> and I want to bring some of this down a little bit. This comes up to the eye, goes around the beaks, so that should actually be a little bit more on the red side. I'm not really sure what my mix was here. So I'll put some, some red through there because it just kind of comes up and goes around the eye and then a little less through here and it comes down the chest there so <clears throat> as we build our layers on here we can definitely be working on adjusting that um, I'm going to start with my um, 
I think I'll go ahead and jump right into the Napthal Red here. And still using just my round brush, I'm just going to start laying in some of this color. Now the Cardinal again should be a fairly easy bird to paint. Um, we're not adding tons of realistic details on these birds, so I'm trying to keep them a little simple. Okay, his wing comes behind that branch there. And if you're worried about getting paint on the branch, because red is a color that's a little more difficult to clean up, then you can apply a piece of tape along your branch there. And that will help. I'll thin my paint a little bit so it will come off my brush a little easier. all the way down through here <clears throat> and then up through here we'll start adding some strokes and it comes around the face and down and you know this will be a blending thing like we did over here where our black and, and white came together and we kind of blended them together it'll be the same way here on this bird and I just drew in a shape the um, Cardinal's eyes are more oval it looks like um, so I just drew a rough shape in there for where we're gonna place the eye but um, don't feel like you know you're set in stone there so all right I'm gonna go back to the beak and I'm gonna put another coat of vermilion on there that's a lot of paint on my brush there yeah I feel like this beak is ginormous so I might have to shrink it down a little bit with some black here in a little bit I'm uh, now loading my brush with the naphthal red and I'm going to put some of this in here, wipe my brush off, and just kind of blend it into that orange a little bit. We want to see both of the colors in there, so we'll leave that there for now. I'm going to go ahead and go over here and do this other one on this bird while I'm painting in the beak. This is Vermilion. I'm just going to wipe my brush off and grab some Naphthal Red. Just tap some in there and give a little color to the beak. I mean, they'll be needing a whole lot more, but um, right now that's that's what they're getting. Okay, I'm going to take my Naphthal Red and some Naphthal Red Light and blend them together on my brush. And let's put some of this in here. And I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of black in there to that mix. I want a few more darker areas back through here. Because the wing is a little bit darker than the rest of the bird. So we can actually add some little darker stuff in here. I just added a little bit of black to my red mix is all I've done. Almost makes a brown color. I'm going to put some down here where the tail feathers are coming behind the body here. Now you can use a detail liner to do this. Um, if you want just a little bit on the chest here not a lot but most of it's going to be like right through the wing here okay I'm going to wipe off and load Napthal Red again And 
just put a little bit more of this in here. Thin your paint so it will flow off of your brush easily. Staying, keeping the brush straight up and down and staying on the tippy toe. I feel like I got too much water now. Not enough paint. Follow the form of the head and go around. I'll bring some up into that black because then when we add the black in there, back in there, we can bring some of that down. And try not to get it on your limb. more of that dark color in the tail feathers. I'm going to wash out because I want to now start applying some black up here on the head. You definitely want it darker through here. I'm just going to go over that eye because it doesn't really matter at this moment. And then it comes down. And into the chest just a little bit. It's almost like a mask on the bird. Like it's wearing a mask, but it's not. Okay. Let's be more out this direction. Okay, I'm just working on this one bird. The only thing that I did as I was doing it was the um, beak that I did on both birds. I'm going to grab a, a longer detail liner brush if I can find one. And I'm going to paint the eye in with a little bit longer bristle brush here. This is a 10-0 liner, but it's long bristles, so I'm going to take my white and my black and make a light to medium gray here. A little bit of water to thin it down, and let's paint in the shape of the eye. And I painted an oval. You can paint a round, so let me show you the difference if you paint it round. Totally up to you, but the the one I'm looking at, it looks like the eye is more oval. So there's round, and I prefer the oval eye. So, but whatever you prefer, you go with that, okay? Okay, so that's the eye. Now, it looks incredibly big, but like we did this one over here, <clears throat> I'm going to take my small round in my black paint, and I'm going to make that smaller, maybe. It's a little thick, so I'm going to add a little water to it. I don't really want to take it down all the way, but I want it to be quite a bit more thin and subtle. Uh, maybe where it's just showing up more on the front side of the um, bird. I'm going to take a little bit of white in my brush to make a gray color because I want it to find the front edge out here a little bit. So I'm going to put some gray in there. We'll come back with some black here in a minute, but <clears throat> I need to define where the, the front part of the bird is. Okay, so to highlight that little eye, um, we'll just take a little bit of that gray mix that we outlined with. And 
a little highlight in there or a big highlight that seems pretty big and it doesn't need to be that bright so a little bit of black take it down I think I took it down too far there's that subtle little line in there and just a little highlight on there all right, I'm going to go over here to the beak and take some of that red and black mix and create the separation to the top and lower beaks here with my detail liner. So the bottom of the beak looks a little bit um, big for me. So I'm going to take it down just a little bit. this I'll just stroke a little bit into this gray that I put here so I can not have so much of it <clears throat> on the front here all right let's start adding some lighter colors in here okay I'm going to <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to add a little bit of that um, vermilion that we used on the beak and put some of that in here. Start a little highlight before we get a little bit more red in here. on the chest and maybe on the front of the wing here a little bit here and just a touch on the tail foot there's not a lot of this uh, orangey color and let's go back into our naphthol red and we'll put some more of this on here Need to add a little water. It's just too thick. All right, we can go into that orange a little bit. Uh, but you don't have to cover it all up. Just let a little of it peek through. Definitely want more down there. Sorry, I thought I had the camera going here. Now, cardinals' wings, <clears throat> the male cardinals, their wings have like an underlying, almost like the chickadee over here where it has the lines. Um, their wings are the same, where they have these really dark lines that go onto their wings. Okay, and through here, I'll have a little bit. And then back through here, they just have all these little bitty tiny little pieces of dark stuff going on. And then their tail feathers also have these fine dark lines that go through them. Okay? So we just dabbed in a few of the 
just black on there so we can come in with some lighter colors and create more feathery strokes. All right, I thinned my naps all red a little bit and I think I might add a tiny bit of white in there. Not too much because it will really turn it pink. And let's see if we can get these strokes to show up here. to have some water in it. It's not going to flow. Stay up on the tip of the brush. This is out, actually Napthal Red Light. I think I might grab a different brush. Okay, I grabbed a six filbert brush. And I'm going to try this because I think I can get a little bit more control here. I'm going to go back and forth. Whoa! I don't want that color. That is like bright. I'm going to go back and forth between the Naphthal Red and the Naphthal Red Light. This bird is very there on my brush. I want to say it's very fluffy kind of. Definitely stay off of your tree limb. I can come back in and highlight right there, whatever color I need right there. Go down the wing here. A little bit on the tail feather, definitely need water. Let's go up on the head. I'm going to have to add some darker ones here. here. I'm going to mix that darker red value, which I could just put a little bit of black in there. I'm going to touch into a tiny little bit of white. I don't want it turning pink. Put a few little, I mean the lightest of touch here. And start adding some. If these get too bright, we can always wash over them with some um, red. Okay, take them back down. Need a little water here. This is going to give it some fluffiness on its chest. Okay, a little fluffy, spiky stuff on its head. And then I'm going to add some thin lines on the wing. This is our Naphthal Red with a tiny bit of white in there. And then little strokes back here. Little, little, little. And put 
just a few down here and some on the tail as well now it's all red with just a little bit of white to thin your paint a little bit I'm staying up on the tippy toe of the brush okay so we've given this bird a lot more um, stroke work here I mean you can really detail this out so much but we're trying to keep our birds a little simple let's highlight on the beak and I'm going to use some warm white and a tiny little bit of vermilion on the top of the beak right there and a little bit right through there And I need to adjust the black on the nose here, or on the beak, because it actually comes over the beak right there. And creates a little bit of a indent thing on the beak. Maybe not quite that big moisture out of my brush okay I want to put a little bit darker stuff back through here on the beak And I feel like I got this black too far. Let me just remove a little bit of it. There we go, that looks much better. He's looking pretty good. I think we're going to start shading on the bird. Then we're going to do a wash of red on it and then see if we need to repeat the shading. Okay, uh, I've grabbed a quarter inch angle now and I'm going to make a very sheer color like we did on this bird of black on my brush. Oh, that's a lot. We don't want it that dark. Wipe off, grab some water over here and go right back here and thin it down with the water. I'd rather you do this lightly because we can come back and repeat it but it's much hard to bring it back to that bright color that we need if we get it too dark so I'm gonna go I actually need a little less water in my brush so I'll wipe that off and load a tiny bit more paint and we're gonna go right there and around the base of the body now if you don't like the way that looks right there you can just and I'm not liking it myself um, blend the um, paint where they come together right here just blend it down into there and we will separate the tail feathers without having that in the body right there I'm going to go underneath this wing here. I'm up on the tip of the brush. I want it a little bit wider down here, but narrow up here at the top. We'll go along here. We still have our feet to add in here, too. We want the, the bottom of the wing to have a little bit of shading. You can mix a little bit of red. You can mix red with a little bit of black for your first shading if you're afraid of getting it too dark, too quick. Okay, I'll definitely have to repeat that because that's not dark enough for me. But I want to go down here and create some separate tail feathers. So I'm going to have one here and maybe one something like that I don't know just however many tail feathers you want to have down there 
So I drew some lines and I'm just going to add a little paint next to each one of these lines and create some separations of our tail feathers there. We'll highlight and that will bring for bring some of them forward. Um, but I do need to darken my shading and I think I will add a little bit of red in there. That'll keep that black from being so incredibly black. So we'll mix the naphthol red and with a little bit of black. And let's go here. I'll go along the back of the bird here. I'll get a little water in my brush. Kind of got that all messed up there. Just a little bit along the back. Don't let it come too far. A little bit along this tail feather, this edge of it. keeping you on camera for that. I'm going to erase this little bit that's right here on my tree limb if I can. I may not be able to. Clean water. I can paint back over it with some light color but if I can remove it that would be good. Okay this area right here needs to be darker so I'm going to grab a little bit of just black paint. And not any extra water because we're just going to tuck some in right along here. Just in that little area. And right here. Okay, he's looking pretty good, I think. Okay, we may darken that, I don't know, but for now. We're going to add a little bit of a highlight down here on the tail feathers. Not too much. I'm going to grab a little bit of, I think, white, maybe, warm white mix. Just mix them together. Just We just got a little bit. Don't. So this one can be on top. And this one can be on top. And the others can push behind there. So in that case... We can add just a little bit more black next to them. And then I can erase my lines I drew in there because they get very distracting and confusing and enough for the tail feathers. Let's put a little wash on here of our naphthol red because these birds are really bright. I need to get some fresh out. If you have another red that you like to use then go for that. Alright so I'm going to thin some down with some water. I want it to be a wash and this is pretty pigmented paint here. So I want to keep it pretty sheer. So it's mostly water, not very much paint. And we'll wash over our bird. All of the red areas. Well, the entire bird actually. With this wash of red. And then we can come in and see what we need to do to darken anything and I feel like we, we need just some more red on the bird period I just feel like um, I need more red so let's try so that wash helped but it still seems very bright through here so I'm going to put a few, I don't want to cover up all of that 
but I want to put a few in here to just make him look a little more red. Now when we go down to the next bird, he'll be basically the same way. Um, I did base him in with a little bit different color, so he might you know, look a little bit different, but it'll be, basically be the same way. Okay. Right through here we need a lot more red and less of that highlight. So more red through here. Yeah, I'm looking at a photograph of a cardinal. It's very bright so I don't know if it was adjusted computer-wise or not. He's an extremely bright bird. We had a ton of cardinals in our tree the other day and I kept trying to get pictures of them. But man, they are flighty little birds. They kept moving all over the place and I got a couple but they weren't as good as what I would have liked them to have been. Let's put his feet on. And we're going to use black. And he's got... Maybe? Where's my line drawing here? He's got... Oh, that's a lot of paint. He's got some... One of his feet is right here. And one right here. Okay, that's with black. And we'll highlight with some white. You can do it while it's wet. It's fine. Oh. Because it's okay if it blends a little bit in there. That was a lot of paint in that middle one. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit more shading on here. It's really not dark enough. I want the feet to be dry. Because I want to put a little bit at the back of the feet to kind of join them and make them look rounded. I had my original line drawn here, so let me erase that. So. That cardinal is done, unless you absolutely want to add more detail in it. I think he's done. A little bit more red on his tail, I think. bright red like we put up on the body up here. Okay. That one looks pretty good. I like him. I think he turned out really well. Again, um, I repeated several steps on here, but you know, everything was just a repeating layer to build up to get this bird as red as what I wanted him to be. So now we're going to go work on the other one and I think he looks pretty darn good. Alright, so for this one, I'm going to take my um, black and maybe add a little bit of naphthol red to it. I don't know. And I'm going to create some lines on the wings. I'll just change it up a little bit here. 
Some lines on the tail feathers. And all this area looks pretty good. So we're going to start with our vermilion and naphthol red light mixed together. And we're just going to start adding some strokes in here. This one might be a little bit more orange than the other one, and that's okay. I've already done the feet and the beak, because they're done the exact same way over there, so no worries there. Do the top of the bird's head. And I'll probably move through this one much quicker. Um, just because it's pretty much the same as the other one. I'm probably using a little bit different mix of paint here, but the basic structure of the bird is exactly the same. Shading and the highlighting will be the same. This one's got a lot more orange on it because we mixed the naphthol red light and the vermilion together. So now I'm going to go straight into naphthol red here. Add it down just a little bit and we'll start adding some of this color on here. You can add your values of black in here like I did up there. Or you can leave this one different and not add your values of black. So I do want to bring a few. And I want to keep it confined into that shape. So I can bring some little fluffy stuff coming out and around. And that's probably right there where I might want to add a little bit of lighter color right here as I'm coming out from that shape a little bit. And it's okay if my orange is not dry and it's mixing with it. I'm okay with that. No two birds look exactly alike, so I do not feel like you have to make them look identical. I did make their beaks pretty much the same and their feet, but So we can see this one's going to be a little bit different color of red. It may not end up being much different by the time we put our washes and stuff on here. I'm going to add some more darker colors on here now with our... Um, I'm just going to take my brush and add black to my brush and make some dirty red color some more naphthol red out. Okay, let me take that uh, it's um, naphthol red and black mix here. Maybe a little bit more black in there, I don't know. And we're going to put some more of this in our wing and tail feathers. And any place that you really want to put some of this, you can just add some of this color. Don't feel like you're limited to what I do grab some pictures of some cardinals and if you see a color somewhere else on them that I'm not seeing then um, by all means work that in. So that's our um, black and um, red mix. So now I want to take my naphthol red 
and a little bit of warm white and we'll make that lighter color a little bit more warm white in there I think and we'll start adding some of this a little bit of water in there And like I said, this one will come together a little bit more quickly because you've done that one. And we're doing the same steps. Here. I'm not going to do it right there because that's where I want to be the darkest. But we'll put some through here. And some on our tail feather. And we do need some up here on the top of the bird, just to create some highlight areas. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I think it's looking pretty good. Now that was with our um, naphtha red and a little bit of warm white, kind of made a pink color. Okay. I'm going to wash our brush out. I'm still just continuing with this small round here. Okay, I want to dry this um, before we move on. And I need to pull a few black strokes out from the front of this bird. Right here. Cover up that line and make it not quite so... bit above the eye here. It really comes out around the eye there. Okay, I want to go into my naphtha red now. I'm going to thin it with a little bit of water. And we're going to add some of these in here. We're going to do some shading and some washing. And then repeat probably some shaded areas. So these strokes I'm going to keep mostly at the top of the chest, maybe a little bit coming down the front of it, top of the wing, and we'll do some on the head. This area is really red. And we'll put a few on the tail. And I'll definitely have to add some darker ones in there. Okay, I'm going to dry this, so I want to do that wash. So that was stroking in some of the naphtha red. Okay, I don't want to do that wash first, actually. I want to shade. We're going to do that mix of carbon black and red first. Naphthal red. And we're going to shade under the wing. And back there a little bit. And we want to shade to separate the wing from the tail feathers. And we can add a little bit more black to it and create some dark areas on the tail feather. Then we'll repeat that float with just some black. A very sheer color of black. There's not much shading on this bird here. Just under the wing. And we can kind of pity pat some of that here and there. 
to just create a little bit of a shaded value. Some up there, because that can be a little bit darker through there. Where that comes out a little bit. We can put some of this up here too. Okay. All right, that was our shading there. Let's wash over the bird now with that naphthol red wash. And remember, it's mostly water. And then we might have to come back in with some brighter highlights here. This one doesn't have as bright of highlights as the other one, which is fine. They don't have to match exactly. Cardinals are very red. Let's white and go out. Always helps, I think, if you can see it more from a distance. So yeah, I feel like I feel like this one needs more of the highlight color, which was the warm white and naphthol red. We'll stroke some more of these in here. Definitely need some separating the wing here. You can also use the orange in this mix instead of the red. Oops, that's a lot of orange, or white. I don't want that much white. And this will make a more muted highlight here. And then come back and wash over it with some red. So this is just that same highlight that we did up there and that we did before we washed over it. My wash was probably just a little bit too strong. This will definitely get us some more feathery strokes in here. Okay, I don't like that. That's incredibly bright along that back edge. Let's take that right off of there. You like it. Alright, before I add my wash in here, I'm going to go back with some of the naphthol red. Because these areas where the shoulder is, where the chest, alright, where the chest starts, and um, the top of the head definitely need to be mostly red. And I could repeat my shading there a little bit. I think it needs to be a little bit darker. that one look a lot better. Let me dry that. I'll repeat my shading and then we'll wash over it. I think that ought to get this one pretty close to that one up there. 
I mean, they're going to be a little bit different because my undertone was just slightly different. All right, let's repeat a little bit of shading here. I do want to do a few strokes of the naphthol red back in here. And then we'll do a quick wash over it and see how it looks. Alright, let me dry that. Then a quick wash of naphthol red and I don't know I might have to do the wash twice but I think it's looking pretty good Remember, this is mostly water, a little bit of paint. This is a pretty bright paint, so we just want enough to tint the water. Just tint the water so we can keep this cardinal a nice red color. And I think he looks pretty good. All right, I want to do one last thing here. And that is try and shade. I don't know if I can do this or not. It might be too small of an area underneath. Separating the nails a little bit. This one didn't really need it. A little shading on the branch for the shadow of the bird. Actually that right there might need a little highlight on it. It's too wet. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, this is where you just look over it and see any place that you want to clean up or brighten or darken, whatever you think it needs. I think overall it's looking pretty good. So I need to step back from it for a little bit and make sure everything looks good, that the limb is not too busy for the background and make sure everything is doing what it needs to do. But overall, not too bad, not too bad. Um, I love those birds sitting in that tree. Oh my gosh, the background, I adore the background. I adore the background. So let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you like this project. Leave me some comments, some feedback, share. Please subscribe. I appreciate you, every one of you, and liking my videos and subscribing, sharing, all that stuff really helps my YouTube channel grow uh, with the um, way that the algorithm is in YouTube. So I hope you guys will uh, subscribe and um, paint along with me on my next live, which I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I think it's going to be great. But this one was a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I will see you guys on the next one, everybody. Bye-bye.